Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 68 of the current crisis. And today's video is all about the mask. And we'll go through some of the things that you need to know about masks as of today, the 21st of May, the day that masks here in Spain became compulsory for the time being at least. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening as usual, so keep those comments coming along. Big thanks for all of the people that decided to support the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. Big thanks to all of the people that bought some merchandise. New merchandise coming up shortly with some of my favorite Spanish expressions on it, so keep an eye out for that in the near future. And also a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into some of the news that caught my attention over the last couple of days. And uh, masks are the key feature, but also that the state of alarm has been extended. Yesterday, the Prime Minister went in front of Congress to ask for the extension, and he managed to get the support in the end. And we can see here that he has extended the state of alarm until June the 7th with the votes of the C's party, Ciudadanos, or the Citizens Party, the PNV, which is the Basque Nationalist Party, and the Canary Coalition. So the Canarian government giving support to Mr. Sanchez in order to extend that state of alarm until June the 7th. Now yesterday during his speech, Mr. Sanchez said that no one has the right to waste the effort of the Spanish people. And what he's referring to here is that the effort that people here have put in over the last 68 days in order to control the health crisis that we have. And in his opinion, if we go back to normal ways, this health crisis could exacerbate again and all of the work that we've done before will be thrown away, again, according to the Prime Minister. Now, the Madrid government and Spanish government feud continues. And we can see here that the Madrid government has taken to the courts the central government's decision to not allow them to go to phase one. So this fight between the Madrid government and the central government continues, and we'll see if the court system comes up with a ruling on this. Now, as I said before, the use of masks is now mandatory here in Spain as of today, and we're going to have a look at some of the things that you need to know about the wearing of masks. Now, this compulsory use of masks is going to be in place until the state of alarm finishes. Remember that now it's going to go to June 7, as I just said. So let's have a look at what we need to know about masks. Now, we can see here that masks are mandatory from today, Thursday, from the age of six and over. And here we can see how and when to use them and some of the exceptions. So firstly, let's have a look at the exceptions here, okay? So who has to wear a mandatory mask? People who present some type of respiratory difficulty that can be aggravated by the use of a mask. People in whom the use of a mask is contraindicated for duly justified health reasons, or who, due to their situation of disability or dependency, prevent behavioral changes that make their use unfeasible. Development of activities in which, by their very nature, the use of a mask is incompatible and course of force majeure or situation of need. So there we go, some of the exceptions to the new mandatory mask rule here in Spain. Now a lot of people are gonna be asking what type of mask do we need to wear? Can you make a mask at home? Well, it's a difficult question to answer, but let's have a look at what the press say here, and we can see what type of mask is recommended. The obligation to wear a mask is applicable to any type, although the government recommends that the hygienic and surgical ones that cover the nose and mouth be preferably used. It also asks to observe the indications of the health authorities about its use, Therefore, FFP1, FFP2, and FFP2 self-filtering masks are not recommended for use by the general population. So there we go. As long as the mouth and nose are covered, you should be able to get away with any type of mask, although preferably hygienic and surgical masks according to the government. Now, the government has a PDF document available on their website, and I'll also make part of that PDF document available in the section below, so you can click on that to find it. And we can see here, what kind of mask do I need according to my situation? So we can see we've got healthy people, We've got sick people and we've got people that are in contact with the virus. So for example, healthy people, you need to get a hygienic mask, okay? 
Sick people need to get a surgical mask and people in contact with the virus need to have what's known as an EPI mask. Now, I'm not sure if that's the translation in English, but here in Spain, if you go to the pharmacy, you ask for an EPI mask if you are in contact with people for the virus. But apart from that, the hygienic mask or the surgical mask in other situations. And remember that you can buy them now at most supermarkets. So when you go to pick up your bread, if you go to pick up some fruit, you should see masks on sale. So you can pick them up there. Now, still on the topic of masks, it has been suggested here that a family with two children will spend more more than 100 euros a month on face masks. So another expense for the average Spanish family. And in my opinion, not a good time to have an extra expense in the family budget, especially with so many people out of work and some people that are still waiting to be paid for their redundancy plans. Now the use of masks also creates a lot of extra questions. For example, can you be fined for not wearing a mask? And we can see here that the government order does not establish a sanctioning regime, but non-compliance can be considered disobedience to authority. So if you get stopped by the police and you're not wearing a mask and they think that you should be wearing one, you could be fined, as we see here, for disobedience to authority. So be careful and remember that those fines are a minimum, I think, of 601 euros up to over a thousand. So be careful if you don't have the mask on in the correct situation. Now, over the last few weeks here in Spain, the queues for food banks have been steadily growing. And we can see here that Brussels is now warning of the risk of widening regional disparities in Spain. And they have criticized the structural problems and deficiencies of the health system and warned that it will increase high levels of poverty or social exclusion, especially among families with children. So there we go, structural problems and deficiencies being highlighted there by the European Union. And most likely, if you live in Spain, you will already have noted these structural problems and deficiencies in different areas here in Spain. Now, yesterday on the news, we also saw that Greece is opening up to tourism again, and they were accepting flights from Germany and other places inside the European Union. And we can see here that Spain is already the country in the European Union that most hinders the arrival of tourists. So there we go, more problems for the tourist industry here in Spain. Spain if other countries are starting to open up, especially ones that are direct rivals with Spain, for example, Greece. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from the last video. One here from Carmela, she says, Hi, beaches in Fuengirola are closed, but we have seen a few people swimming, not sure what's happening. Carmela. Another one here from Juan Pablo Perez Gomez, regarding the question about beach use, it's up to each municipality to regulate them. Some keep them closed, others allow people to go on walks and exercise on them, but not sunbathing or getting into the water, etc. Over here in Galicia, the regional government wants to set up quotas and a reservation system to be able to go to the beach, which I think is madness and absolutely unpractical. And many municipalities have already said so as well. Also, some municipalities will actually cordon up sections of the beach for a limited amount of people to book. I'll believe it when I see it. So Juan Pablo, they're a bit skeptical about the use of beaches over the summer months. So this question popped up on the video the other day. Somebody asked if they could go for a swim at their local beach. And uh, as we can see here, it depends on your local municipality whether you can go for a swim at the beach or not. And I saw on the television last night that in Barcelona, in Valencia, a lot of people had decided to take a dip in the ocean, even though it is still prohibited in those areas. So the police have their work cut out for them over the next few weeks as the weather starts to get hotter to keep people out of the water on beaches. One here from Tech Deck. Do you know if only EU citizens can travel to Spain late June or will they open up for all international travel? I'm from Canada, so travel for Canadians. Yeah, good question. And as far as I know, and what we saw the other day, that it's only going to be for European citizens as of late June, or at least that's what the minister announced. I don't think there's any plan for international travel just yet or for people to come in from international destinations. But again, this thing is changing all the time, so you never know. I think it's also going to depend on individual countries, whether they allow people to fly into Spain or not, considering the problems that we have had here over the last couple of months. But uh, I'll keep you up to date. One here from Malcolm, he says, but where can you get the mask from? It's impossible to buy anywhere I live, resorted to making my own. Yeah, Malcolm, I don't know where you're living, but here in Madrid, you can now buy masks in the majority of supermarkets and I know that chemists do have plenty of supply at the moment and I suppose it's going to be the same in your particular area of course but again it depends where you are 
If you're in a rural area, most likely you're going to have to go to a supermarket or to the local shop in the town and ask if they can get them in for you. And uh, remember that the government is recommending certain types of masks. So I'm not sure if making your own is going to be valid. But if I find out that information, I'll let you know in the next video. Now one here from Espon1. Hi Stuart, speaking on behalf of my daughter. She's lived in Spain over seven years as a hairdresser. She banks with the German bank N26. She sent her details for ERTE to claim for money whilst out of work and just rang the bank up about her money and was told she couldn't get the money through the bank in Spain. So what is her position to claim her money? Thanks for any help. Yeah, this is a problem for a lot of people. Apparently there are still a lot of people that haven't got their money yet. If they were made redundant by their company, they're still waiting for it. There have been some bureaucratic problems. And in the case of the bank N26, I looked into it and we can see here that the social security requirements prevent this particular bank N26 and their clients and other neo banks from collecting unemployment benefit. Apparently that this entity does not have an operating account with the General Treasury of Social Security and has not communicated it to its clients who discover with surprise that the provision does not arrive. Now again, I don't know what your daughter can do in this specific situation. What I do in this situation is open an account with a Spanish bank, for example, Banco Santander, BBVA, La Caixa, one of the local banks here that do have those agreements with the Social Security in order to get that payment because I don't know how long it's going to take for the N26 bank specifically or other neo banks as we saw here to get that problem sorted out. So if your daughter needs the money in a hurry, I'd recommend she open a bank account with the Spanish bank in order to get that changed and get that money as soon as possible because I'm sure she needs it. One here from Christine. Hi Stuart, it's great to hear that Spain has plans to open the borders the end of June, but for us it all depends on when Australia will allow its citizens to travel overseas. From what has been hinted here, that may not happen till later in the year. Guess time will tell, depending on the situation in each country. As always, thanks for the updates, really appreciate them. Cheers from Australia, Chris. Yeah, Chris, same situation for you in Australia and most likely for people in other international destinations. It'll depend when your country opens up international travel again. We know that Australia has been quite strict with it. And as you said, they're hinting at it towards the end of the year. So uh, most likely no international travel for Aussies until then. And uh, that's most likely going to happen in other countries as well, I presume. One here from Fast Eddie. Hello, Stuart. Are you worried that now that winter is coming to the Southern Hemisphere, that the pandemic will become more intense in Australia? Yeah, Fast Eddie, I'm worried. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in Australia that are worried as well, because you're going into those winter months. And of course, we don't know how the virus is going to react in cold conditions. I think Australia did reasonably well by shutting down the international borders and also the state borders and trying to keep the virus contained contained. But uh, as we've seen in Melbourne over the last couple of weeks, there have been outbreaks. And again, uh, if those outbreaks continue over the next few months, when the uh, winter months start to set in, it uh, could be a bit of a problem. So uh, I am a little bit worried, to be honest. One here from Chris. Is Burgos a nice place to live for a while? I might get the chance to go there once the travel restrictions are lifted. Yeah, Chris, Burgos would be a fantastic city to live in for a short period of time. I wouldn't recommend living there for too long because the winters get very, very cold in that part of the world. I'd probably recommend somewhere like Malaga or the Canary Islands if you like better weather. But uh, Burgos, from a cultural point of view, from a uh, historic point of view, fantastic city, as well as all of the cities in the Castilla Leon region. So, for example, if you go to Burgos, Sodi is also a nice city, Zamora is an interesting city, Leon, fantastic city. Ponferrada even is a fantastic city to live in for a short period of time. And as long as you don't depend on the local economy, you should be okay. One here from Cyberfloat. Hi Stuart, thanks for the informative videos regarding Spanish citizenship. It's not really a practical option right now. The system is horrifically backlogged and the wait is about four years. After waiting two years, I finally opted to pay a lawyer to expedite my application legally. That was right before the lockdown. Needless to say, I'm still awaiting my Spanish citizenship. Yeah, I can imagine that it is difficult to get any bureaucratic thing done at the moment. The system is completely backed up. And as you said here, the 
wait could be up to four years. So a long time to get your Spanish citizenship if that's what you were deciding to do. But as we can see here in another comment, he says, hi Stuart, to become a Spanish citizen is quite difficult depending on your level of fluency. You also have to have a knowledge of Spanish culture and history, so go back to school for all that. Not so easy at 77 when you go into a room and then stop and think, what did I come in for? Spain do not allow dual passports and we really do not want to give up our UK one. My wife and I love it here and as we cannot do our usual trip home July, August, we're going to go to Lugo in Galicia for a few days. Do you or anyone have any idea as to what it's like? We've booked a spa hotel, so it must be popular. Yeah, Tony, I do know Lugo. It is a fantastic city, especially if you go to the Lugo coast, to the north of the country. It's a beautiful place in the world. The food's great, people are friendly. I think you've made a good decision to go to Lugo over the summer months. Now, regarding the Spanish citizenship test, I understand it can be difficult for some people, but I managed to find one online here. So I'm gonna do one here quickly and see what my knowledge of Spanish culture is. So let's have a look. Now, could you pass the Spanish citizenship test? Let's have a look at the questions and see how we go. Question one of 11, who is responsible for calling a general election in Spain? The king, correct. Number two, where does the king of Spain live? That's right, he lives in Zarzuela, correct. How many colors are there in the flag of Spain? Two colors, correct. What's the highest mountain in Spain? That is in Tenerife, the Teide, correct. The main character of the novel, Don Quixote, and whom? Sancho Panza, easy one. Juan Ramon Jimenez was awarded the Nobel Prize in which discipline? Literature. In what year did the Catholic kings conquer Granada? 1492, everyone knows that. How much maternity leave is a woman with only one child normally granted in Spain? 16 weeks, thank you very much. Which of the following sweets is not typically eaten around Christmas time here in Spain? Churros, of course. And what is the emergency number in Spain? 112. And the last one, which is the largest fishing port in Spain? Vigo, of course, in Galicia. So there we go, as easy as pie if you brush up a little bit on your Spanish culture. As we can see, the questions are not difficult. I think you also have to pass a language test as well. So uh, basically it's a piece of cake if you brush up a little bit on your Spanish history and culture and language. So there we go. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Remember to debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.